just want to tell you that you see that we do the same thing as we did for simple harmonic oscillator because the magnetic field is also an oscillator itself, right? So do not worry, follow whatever you can follow. I just need to go through this so that you, un you, you agree with me. Yeah, we can quantize the electromagnetic field in the same way. And that's the only message I want to give. But something good to learn. So photon, always remember, photon is electromagnetic field. When you do microwave, we talk about photon. When I started this field, I, or you, at the beginning, you feel very uncomfortable. Why they're talking about photon? Oh yeah, photon is electromagnetic wave, right? Night is just a different frequency. So it has mass equal to zero. You apply the Hamiltonian to it, you get the energy, right? Energy, of course, this is H times F, which means H bar omega, right? This is the energy of photon. H bar omega is good to memorize. The momentum of the magnetic field, electromagnetic field, momentum of photon, H bar K, right? Or this is H uh, times divided by lambda is the same, right? It also has spin, actually, photon. It has a spin equal to one total spin. So it means you have three possible spin, plus one, minus one, and zero, right? Okay. Uh, again, this is because if you go through the angular momentum in quantum mechanics, you find that these are the possible components. It is a triplet uh, uh, state. But however, it's very special for photons because they are light. They travel, they are massless, and uh, it needs to be transverse. So uh, it cannot take zero. Okay, so it only has spin up and spin down. It only has these two possible states, right? That is the first thing. And actually they correspond to the circular polarization, right? Again, we don't go into detail, but try to link this to what you are learning in E140, if you can. So we know there's a magnetic field, there's an electric field. When you do this uh, Maxwell equation, we deal with magnetic field and electric field, right? But there's something more fundamental. Usually we have the vector potential. Have you learned this in re 140 Huh? Still have not learned vector potential? Oh, okay, anyway. But, but the point is that it really doesn't matter. It's just that you, you know very well for this one, right? Electric field equals to the gradient of the potential that, that, that you know very well, right? Rates of change, I mean, the space change of the uh, poten electrical potential is the magnetic field. But in a more generalized framework, it actually also depends on the rate of the change of a vector potential, okay? It just come from general, uh, is it general? Uh, I mean, Maxwell equation, right? I, I, of course, they appear in the special relativity. It's very interesting it, uh, for EM because they're traveling at the speed of night. So actually, they already fulfill all the special relativity equations, right? Because it's traveling very fast. <laughs> you know that when you go very fast, you need to use special relativity, right? But this is by itself fulfill all the uh, relativity equation. The B can also make as a curve of the something called vector potential, right? So if you learn special relativity, you learn about something called four vector. You don't only deal with the time, the, the space, free vector. You also have the time. So every time is four coming together. And for duality, same in here, uh, the magnetic field, you also have the three components of this vector potential and one component of this scalar potential. Scalar potential is usually what we do in E, e, right? Uh, one volt, two volt. These are the scalar potential. But don't worry. The message here is not ask you to learn the classical EM. I just show you that I am doing classical EM. Okay? And we will also do something called Coulomb gauge because if you divide the magnetic field as this, I can then permit many choices of the A. And in order to limit them, sometimes we do Coulomb gauge means you take the A so that the divergence equals zero. We also have Lorentz gauge, which we will use later, 
when we do the superconducting circuit. But just understand because many choices of A will give you the, the same B, okay? Because B is something real, something you really uh, measure, right? This is real, real, real stuff. But to make it as a curve of another vector, this another vector, vector potential can have many choices, okay? Uh, but this is more fundamental, which I don't understand, but that's just uh, in EM theory if you go deep, right? Now then, I have something very complicated. So you only need to represent everything in A as a function of location and time. Again, don't worry. What it's talking about is, is sum over the K. What is K? Momentum. So you have, can have many different momentum. For example, you put in a boss a cavity, right? Your momentum may be quantized, right? So you have different K, I mean, K re re related to the wave number, right? K equal to two pi over lambda, right? You also have this mu, which is the polarization. You can have left circular polarization or right circular polarization. Again, not, import, not important if you don't get it. You just say that uh, it is a linear combination of different mode. And then you have this uh, time dependence, e to the power IKL, e to the power negative, negative IKL, because your wave can go forward and backward, still satisfies the Maxwell equation, right? But then you have a coefficient in front of it. This is the component. And that's why sometimes people say that second quantization is that the coefficient of the Fourier transformation becomes the uh, operator. That is second quantization. But at this stage, we are still in the classical regime, right? So do not think this is complicated. What this telling you is just that linear combination. Right. Any A is a linear combination of fundamental mode, which you can treat as the eigenvector. Okay? Just a linear combination of many mode. Okay, so this magnetic field is that much of this wave propagating forward plus that much of that wave propagating forward and also this wave propagating backward. It gives me any arbitrary magnetic field. Okay. Then what do we do? Still classical. Now we assume this is in a box, right? Assume in a box. So because of the boundary condition, your K needs to be quantized, right? Uh, you cannot have arbitrary wavelength. And I just substitute this back to the equation using, right? Using E equals to negative partial A, partial T, right? Partial A, partial T equal E. Phi equal to zero because I assume there's no charge. The divergence of phi is zero. Then I get this. So nothing special. It's just classical uh, mechanics. But at this stage, we see that I am ready to do quantization. So what do I do? We promote this coefficient. Again, I just told you, we did Fourier transformation of the magnetic field to find all these components. And each of them has a coefficient, right? I promote this one to an operator, A and A dagger. Very familiar to you, right? A and A dagger. And they have this commutation relationship. A and A dagger equals to one when they equal when this mu and k equal to each other. Here is more complicated because we don't only have one mode, we have multiple mode, we have different frequency, right? We have different polarization, right? So each of them can be quantized. You will have a multiple simple harmonic oscillator. And but when you are Commuting with yourself, when mu equal to mu dash, k or k dash means they have the same momentum, same polarization, same spin, then this equals to one. Again, this is just like 
What we learn in simple harmonic oscillator? A, A dagger equals to one. But at that time, we only have one mode, only have one uh, oscillator. Here, I have multiple oscillator, right? So with this, then what's, what, what happened? You see, I did not do anything special. I just copied the equation, but just change A, K to A and A bar to A dagger. And I forgot to say this, A bar and A dagger are complex conjugate to each other, right? Do you see that? And what does it mean here? Just let's recall, right? Let's see if I can say something. This one, how to say? This one, it's just like, for example, we are talking about uh, H equals to P squared over 2M plus m omega square x over 2 just like this and this one is just like h hat equals to p hat square over 2m plus m omega square x hat over 2. we have exactly the same equation but we just promote it to uh, another operator But since we are using head, actually uh, using A and B, maybe a better example will be this one is like H equals to uh, no, I, I cannot do that actually. I, I don't want to do that, sorry. Uh, but, but do you see what I'm doing here? I just promote it to an operator, right? Say it's like it. That's like the one on top is classical and the one on bottom is... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Like what we are doing before. Okay, that's why I met me. Right. Okay. How about for the Hamiltonian? This is the classical one. The total energy of the EM field is just half epsilon times E squared times B squared times C squared, right? And... I just go through the math. I did not, of course. I just copy. Then you will get something like this. And when you promote, then you get something like this. Isn't that this is very similar to h bar omega a dagger a plus half? Like what we did earlier. Okay. So then we done the quantization, right? So what is the point? I don't, I don't ask you to study. We're not going to test you. I just want to show you. You just use what you learn in simple harmonic oscillator. That is how you quantize an electromagnetic field. Okay. But here I do want to introduce something. How about where is the generalized coordinate and momentum? I have the raising and lowering operator. Here is the raising and lowering operator. So in this magnetic electromagnetic field problem, the generalized coordinate, we usually call it capital Q. And it is equals to square root h bar divided by 2 times a plus a dagger. Can we go back to here? What is the general coordinate of simple harmonic oscillator? It's A plus A dagger times the coefficient, right? So similar here, it is A plus A dagger times another coefficient because this one will make the things right, okay? And then what is P? We call it capital P usually. It is negative I H bar over 2 a minus A dagger, just like what we had for the simple harmonic oscillator, okay? And to save time, I will just show, I will not show that, maybe again, we make it as a homework. Q and P commutator, what you get is I H bar. Recall, for a simple harmonic oscillator, I mean for 
not simple harmonic, just a X and P, right? What is that? I H bar. So you see there's some connection here, right? We agree that X and P does not commute, they give me I H bar. In this formalism, we also have a generalized coordinates and generalized momentum. And it is IH bar also when, we, when you do that. That's what I want to say. Do not get scared, right? Uh, it will be good if you have time. Look at this guy. Keep thinking. You will learn a lot. Keep asking yourself. Otherwise, I only want you to understand that we do quantization. We also have this promotion or, or the, this... Uh, Raising and lowering operator, creation and annihilation operator. So this is nice thing that I create one photon, destroy one photon. Okay? And it also has this generalized coordinates and momentum, which is a linear combination of A and A dagger. Is that okay? Sorry, this is square root over two. Yeah. Two is inside the square root. Yeah, sorry for that. And I square root symmetry. <laughs> Good catch. So, but but I the, this slide again. The purpose is if you don't have time to study, no need to study. Just to help you to trust me more how to do the quantization. Get more used to it, right? Because later we are going to quantize the circuit. Okay, so we will go to superconducting qubit. The first thing we need to learn 